A simple starting question can lead to the whole of projective geometry. What happens if point, line, and plane are three versions of one and the same entity? One deity in three persons. In the plane, this implies a polarity between point and line. That is, we can transform every insight into a complementary insight, believe it or not, simply by interchanging the terms point and line. In the line, we swap point and plane. In the point, line and plane. Polarity seems a more telling expression for this fundamental law than the more commonly used term duality, even though polar is elsewhere used for something quite different. And another remark on terminology. Throughout this presentation, line means a straight line, infinitely extended. Here is a simple example of polarity in the plane. Any two points have exactly one line in common. That is, any two distinct points. For now, we'll use everyday language when counting. Interchanging the appropriate terms results in a new statement. Any two lines have exactly one point in common. Are there exceptions? Or do the alleged exceptions arise merely from a prejudice? In other words, what about parallels? To be consistent, we need to conceive of a point shared by parallel lines. The mind-soul, that is the anthroposophical term for the stage in the evolution of consciousness achieved in the Greco-Roman cultural epoch, shuns such a thought as unimaginable. It thereby accepts certain gaps in its worldview. The modern consciousness soul boldly takes on the consequences of following something all the way through. To help take the meeting of parallels seriously, try picturing this in movement. Two lines cross, one blue one green. Now picture the green line rotating. Here it is shown in eight positions with equal angles between them to suggest that it rotates at a constant speed. As it does, what happens to the crossing point? The crossing point moves along the blue line. Its speed varies. It moves most slowly when the green line is close to perpendicular and fastest when the green line is close to parallel. There the crossing point surpasses the speed of light, disappears into the infinite distance and at the same instant reappears with infinite velocity from the other direction. This exercise leads us to a threshold. There we can no longer picture what happens, but we can think it with perfect clarity. 
we thus arrive at the shocking notion that parallels share exactly one infinitely distant point, simultaneously present in both directions. More about this in the next installment. For now, it is enough if you are willing to take it as a working hypothesis. Now for some further examples of polarity, this time in space. That is, we shall practice visualizing three-dimensional figures. In space, the polarity is between point and plane. The term line remains unchanged. Any two points share exactly one line. This line contains all the planes shared by both points. If a line lies in a plane, the plane may be said to lie in the line. The line contains the plane. Likewise, if a point lies in a line, the line may be said to lie in the point. And if a point lies in a plane, the plane may be said to lie in the point. Can you picture this statement? Feel free to draw it. If you want to work it out on your own before seeing a ready-made image, pause the presentation now. All the planes shared by the two points pass through the line. The line contains the planes, as the spine of a book holds its pages. And now, can you find the polar statement? If you are a beginner, you may simply switch out the words and try to figure out afterwards what you have said. Pause now if you like. Any two planes share exactly one line. This line contains all the points shared by both planes. Maybe you can picture that without help. Quiz. If the planes lie parallel, where is their common line? In the infinite distance, a straight line in all directions more about that in the next installment. Next exercise. If a line and a point do not lie in one another, then they share exactly one plane. Can you picture that? Feel free to draw it. And can you polarize it? Pause now if you like. If a line and a plane do not lie in one another, then they share exactly one point. Can you picture that? A line not in a plane does nevertheless pass through it and it does so at a point. The miracle is that the polar statement is also true every time. Here too, consistency requires that a line parallel to a plane 
share its infinitely distant point with the plane. If a line and a point lie in one another, then all the planes of the line lie in the point. We had something like that before. But not all the planes of the point lie in the line. Can you see it? A plane could slice the line at that point. Such a plane lies in the point, but not in the line. If you want to practice polarizing, pause now. If a line and a plane lie in one another, then all the points of the line lie in the plane, but not all the points of the plane lie in the line. Easy. Any three points not lying in a line share exactly one plane. Got it? Want to pause and interchange the terms? Any three planes not lying in a line share exactly one point. Try picturing two adjacent walls of a room plus the floor. Now if all three planes lie parallel, they share the same infinitely distant line. So the condition is not fulfilled. From the beginning of projective morphology, it took some 200 years before the great Jargon discovered polarity in the early 19th century. The law of polarity is so radical that we have chosen it for this series as our foundation. Polar constructions are hard to think out. They demand a thinking with inner initiative, which cannot rely on support from pictures, but itself generates new and perhaps unexpected pictures. Polarity turns the geometrical image into its opposite, a qualitative inversion. The activity of thinking thus engaged is of great value in education and in self-education.